Hello everyone, welcome back to my classes. So in the last video, I gave you all an introduction about what exactly is the torsion of shafters. Okay, torsion in shafters. Now in this particular video, we are going to go ahead and do a problem related to this kind of technique. All right, so starting with this question, it says a solid circular shaft of 120 mm diameter and of length 2 meters is subjected to a torque of 20 kN. Calculate the maximum shear stress and angle of twist. Take modulus, take modulus of rigidity as 80 into 10 power 4 Newton per mm square. Okay, so this is what is given. So let's let me just decode this question. So it says that there is a circular shaft whose length is two meters and the diameter of this solid circular shaft is 120 mm. Now this particular shaft needs to transfer, okay? It is subjected to a torque of 20 kilo Newton into meter. So now based on all these criteria and depending on the modulus of rigidity, we have to find out two things. Okay, one is the maximum shear stress. Okay, we have to find out Fs and the angle of twist theta. All right, so let's start with our problem. So if you people remember, like if you have been following me from the previous semester, Every time we start any problem, what is the first thing that I always ask you to do? I always ask you to do is write down whatever is given. Okay, so what is given? Let's start with the first thing which is diameter. Diameter D equals to 120 mm. Then the next thing is length. Length L is how much it is? Two meters. Let's convert this into millimeter because diameter and all the other values are in newtons and millimeter only. So this will be two meters or 2000 mm. You can also write it as 2 into 10 power 3 mm. Okay, that does not make any difference. Now the next thing is torque, okay, torque T and how much is it? It is 20 kilo Newton meter. Now if we convert this into Newton millimeter, it will be 20 into 10 power 3 into 10 power 3. So this 10 power 3 belongs to kilo Newton to Newton and this 10 power 3 belongs to meter millimeter okay so you, you need not write it like this 10 power 3 10 power 3 you can write it down directly as 10 power 6 okay 20 into 10 power 6 newton millimeter is the torque which this shaft is facing next is modulus of rigidity And that is G. And how much is it? It is 80 into 10 power 4 Newton per mm square. Okay. So sometimes instead of Newton per mm square, this value is also given as MPA. Okay. 80 into 10 power 4 MPA. This MPA stands for Newton per mm square only. All right. So I'm just telling these things to you so that if the question paper setting person gives MPA, you people should not think that Ibrahim has not taught us what MPA stands for. Okay, <laughs> take that as a poor joke, which I'm really good at. Anyways, so now we have all the given values. Now, before we begin with the first step, we have to write down the general equation. Okay, so what is the general equation that we have to use? I have already shown that to you in the previous video. So if you have subscribed to my channel 
and press the bell shaped icon then whenever i am posting the next video you will get information about it at the first place okay otherwise you will have to follow my whatsapp status or wait for the message on whatsapp so t by j equals to g theta by l equals to fs by r okay so what are all these things t is the torque j is the polar moment of inertia g is modulus of rigidity theta is the angle of twist l is the length of shaft fs is the maximum shear stress and r is the radius of shaft okay so step 1 I'll, I'm going to show this to you in two steps. Step one: calculating maximum shear stress. This is what is given okay, for us to find out. Let me just put this into a box. Okay, you also put this in a box when uh, you are writing the exam. Okay, so it will give a good impression about your work. All right. Anyways, so maximum shear stress. So what is the formula for that? See over here, we know what torque is, and we can find out J using the formula, depending on what is the type of shaft, whether it is hollow or solid. So we we have G, we have L, and we have R also. And what is R? Half of diameter. Okay, diameter is already given, so radius also we can find out. All right, so we have to find out two things. One is the angle of twist theta, and another is maximum shear stress. All right, so I want to start with finding out the maximum shear stress. So what I'll do? I'll take this part of the equation that says T by J equals to F S. Divided by R. All right. So now let's go ahead and find out each and every unknown over here, and then we'll cross multiply it simply to get the answer of maximum shear stress. So starting with D, this is already given. Two into ten power six newton millimeter. Then J. So what is J? If you remember, I told you in the previous video that J depends on what type of section the shaft is. Okay, basically J is the polar moment of inertia, and that depends on the section of the shaft. Okay, whether it is solid circular shaft or a hollow circular shaft. So for that, let's go back into the question. And if it, if you have seen the question, it says that it is a solid. Circular shaft. All right. So for that, the formula will be J equals to pi d power four by thirty two. Let's say this was a hollow circular shaft. So this would have been pi capital d power four minus small d power four by thirty two. Okay. So based on these information, what will be the next Value it will be pi d is hundred. Uh, sorry, it is one twenty. So one twenty power four by thirty two, and the answer will be twenty point three five seven into ten power six mm power four. And how am I getting mm? Because diameter is in mm, and we have power four over here, so mm power. Next is no. Next is not F S. Next is R because F S is what we are finding out. And what is R? It is half of diameter. Okay, we all know that. Okay, d by two is what is radius. So diameter is one twenty by two. It will be sixty. Sixty mm. Now we have all the values. Let's substitute this back. Was this is a very easy unit. 
okay we, you can easily score uh, 5 to 10 marks usually they are you know in the exam they are giving as what is the uh, derivation of this general equation okay so if you look into my notes probably you will find out what that derivation is okay i have written those steps in as clear uh, way as possible so just read through the entire content i know we are not habituated to reading through the content but i would advise you to do that okay you will fall in love with the way it has been written okay just read through the derivation which is given in my notes and those notes are attached in the de description below okay there is a link over there so now starting with the formula so what is t now okay just look into this formula t by j equals to fs by r so t is 20 into 10 power 6 divided by j is 20.35 okay uh 20.357 into 10 power 6 equals to fs divided by 60 now simply cross multiply this so 20 into 10 power 6 into 60 divided by 20.357 into 10 power 6 equals to fs so now when we solve this particular step Okay, we will get the answer of F S. And what is the answer of F S? The answer of F S is forty nine point one two three, and the unit is newton per mm square. So write it down. Therefore, maximum shear stress. Is F S equals to forty nine point one twenty three newton per mm square. That's it. We have got the maximum shear stress. Now let's calculate the angle of lift. Let's do that. Let's do it over here only because we don't have to scroll it all the way up again. All right. So now comes step two. Okay. So in step two, we are going to calculate the angle of twist. Calculating angle of twist. All right. So for that, we will consider T by J equals to G theta by L. All right. So we have already got the value of T. Okay, it is twenty into ten power six newton mm, and we also got the value of J twenty point three five seven into ten power six mm per four, and then from the question we have got the value of G also. Okay, and that value is eight into ten power four newton per mm square and we also know the value of l from the question okay it is 2000 mm now we have got the all now we have got all the values let's substitute it back so 20 into 10 power 6 divided by 20.357 into 10 power 6 equals to 8 into 10 power 4 theta divided by 2000. Now let's simply cross multiply them and we will get the answer. So 20 into 10 power 6. Into two thousand divided by twenty point three five seven into ten power six into eight into ten power four equals to theta. Okay, 
Now let's get the answer. So 20 into 10 power 6 into 2000 divided by 20.357 into 10 power 6 into 8 into 10 power 3 will be okay. See, I'm not going to directly solve this because the one thing is probably I might get the wrong answer when I when I am writing the exam. I mean when you are writing the exam. And another uh, reason is if you are increasing the steps, then you know what I'm trying to do. So 20 to 10 power 6 into 2000 will be 4 into 10 power 10 divided by 20.357 into 10 power 6 into 8 into 10 power 4 will be 1.62 into 10 power 12 equals to theta. Okay, so now when I divide this, the answer will be 0 0.024 equals to theta. Okay, so this is the answer of angle of twist. Then simply write it down. Therefore, the angle of twist is theta equals to 0 0.024 radians. All right. So this is what the question was asking us to find out. We were asked to find out the maximum shear stress and the angle of twist. And that's it. This is how we have to solve the problems related to angle of twist. Sorry, solve the problems related to the torsion in shaft. So this is this was one type of problem. Now there is one more type of problem where uh, I'll be showing you how we have to solve the problems where the torsion is not given. Okay, so if you see here in this question, the torsion value is given over here. Okay, it is given as 20 kilonewton meter. So there are also questions where the torque is not given. Okay, torque torsion both of them are same torque is what comes out of torsion okay so anyways so torque will be given over in few questions torque will not be given in few questions so this was where the torque was given now in the next video i'm going to explain you uh, how to do a problem where the torque is not given all right everyone so don't forget to subscribe and share about this video and I'll see you all in the next video.